Before we start our lesson for today, I am inviting all of you to join us in a magical learning experience at home. Enroll now at Vibal's Happy Homeschool Program. You can find the details at the description part of this video. Hope to see you there! Try touching your back. Can you feel some hard bones? How about patting your dog or your cat? Do they also have backbones the same as yours? How about the insects you see around the house? Do you think they also have backbones? Hi everyone! Welcome to another episode of our Scientific Friday! I am Teacher Janelle, and I'm on a journey to understand the different things around us. Are you ready to join me for today's lesson? Come on! I hope you were able to watch our lesson about the different habitats of animals. There, we were able to meet the different creatures in the animal kingdom. But, aside from different habitats, did you know that animals can be classified into two categories? These are the animals with the backbone and the animals without a backbone. Today, we are going to learn about vertebrate and invertebrate animals. In this topic, we will explore and answer these questions. What are vertebrate animals? What are invertebrate animals? And how do vertebrate and invertebrate animals differ from each other in terms of their characteristics? Again, try touching your back. Do you feel some bones? How about your pets? If you feel some hard bones on your back, it means that you are a vertebrate. Vertebrate animals or chordates are mainly recognized for the presence of backbones or vertebral columns. Animals under this category are mammals, birds, fishes, reptiles, and amphibians. Among the mentioned group of animals, which group do humans belong to? That's right! Mammals! Aside from the presence of backbones, vertebrate animals have these defining characteristics that would help us distinguish them among the other category of animals. First is body symmetry. All vertebrates have bilaterally symmetrical body. This means that the left and right halves of the body are equal in proportion. Second is body size. Vertebrates are generally larger than invertebrates. Third is body system. Vertebrates have complex and highly specialized organs with specific functions and the brain as the main command of the body. Fourth is skeleton. Vertebrates, bones, and skeletons that protect the different internal organs like heart and lungs. The skeleton also gives the body framework and support. Fifth, circulatory system. Vertebrates have a closed circulatory system, which means that their blood flows in closed tubes called blood vessels. Sixth, nervous system. Vertebrates have a complex nervous system made of nerves, brain, and spinal cord. The spinal cord is contained inside the spinal column and the brain is protected by the skull. Seventh, reproduction. In terms of reproduction, most vertebrates reproduce sexually. Thinking time! I mentioned examples of vertebrate animals a while ago. These are mammals, birds, fishes, reptiles, and amphibians. 
Can you think of an animal name that is a vertebrate? Great! Now that we are done with vertebrate animals, let's move on to the next category. I also asked you earlier to imagine some of the insects around or outside your house. Maybe a butterfly? Hmm, do you think they also have backbones? They don't, and they are called invertebrates. Invertebrate animals or non-chordates are mainly recognized for the absence of backbones. Animals under this category are soft-bodied animals like worms, slugs, and jellyfish, insects like butterflies and moths, and crustaceans like crabs and shrimps. Aside from the absence of backbones, invertebrate animals also have these defining characteristics that would help us distinguish them from vertebrates. First, body symmetry. While many invertebrates are also bilaterally symmetrical, there are also radially symmetrical invertebrates. Radially symmetrical animals have a top and bottom side, and it is impossible to distinguish the left side from the right side. Second is body size. Invertebrates are generally smaller than vertebrates, except some invertebrates like the colossal squid with the size of 46 feet. Third, body system. Invertebrates have a simple to unorganized nervous system. Fourth, skeleton. Invertebrates do not have a skeleton that protects their body system. However, Crustaceans have outer skeletons called exoskeleton that protects their soft bodies inside. Fifth, circulatory system. Most invertebrates have an open circulatory system. This means that their blood does not flow in blood vessels unlike invertebrates. A few invertebrates like earthworms have a closed circulatory system. Sixth, nervous system. Invertebrates have simple nervous system compared to vertebrates. They do not have brains with the exception of cephalopods like squid and octopus. Seventh, reproduction. In terms of reproduction, invertebrates may reproduce asexually or sexually. Thinking time again! I have mentioned examples of invertebrate animals a while ago. These are soft-bodied animals, insects, and crustaceans. Can you think of an animal name that is an invertebrate? Great! Before we end our lesson for today, I am inviting you again in a magical learning experience at home. Enroll now at Vival's Happy Homeschool Program. You can find the details at the description part of this video. Hope to see you there! I hope you enjoyed our discovery today. Join me again for our next Scientific Friday. And together, let us discover things around us. Because science is everywhere! This has been Teacher Janelle for Teacher Vival. Goodbye, everyone!